Okay, it's time to for a last talk. The speaker is Igor Kosov. It's written at Lomonosov Moscow State University, but Department of Functional Theory and Functional Analysis. So the title is here. So please, Igor. Yes, yeah, thank you for the introduction. Uh, the goal of, of my talk is to present some uh, connections between uh, our uh, problem of sampling discretization and um, a well-studied problem of uh, um, about sampling of moments of random vectors. Uh, so, firstly, I recall uh, what is the sampling discretization problem. Uh, assume we have two constants and uh, we are given a, uh, some space L uh, and for simplicity we assume that the space consists of continuous functions on some domain omega and uh, mu is a probability uh, measure. Uh, L is n dimensional subspace. And uh, the main question is uh, for what uh, integers m we can find points x1, xm in our domain uh, such that uh, we have this discretization uh, inequality for every function f in our L. And uh, this is the notation for the LP norm. Uh, so this is the main question which was discussed in previous talks. A uh, few comments. Uh, first of all, uh, obviously m should be great, greater than the dimension n. Uh, so we are seeking for the conditions on our subspace L uh, under which you, uh, we can choose uh, this integer m, the number of points uh, in the discretization, uh, to be close uh, to the dimension n. Uh, ideally, it mean close? Um, ideally, to be proportional to n. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, of course, we get some logs. In, in my talk, mm -hmm. we get some logs. Uh, but ideally, is to obtain uh, m of order n. Um, also, uh, which also was discussed uh, in previous talks, uh, there, there is a sampling discretization problem with weights. Uh, the problem is um, actually very similar, but uh, we uh, again uh, want to find uh, the least possible number m uh, such that we have points and weights, not necessarily uh, positive, but uh, ideally positive, such that we have this discretization estimate. Uh, the special case when the constants uh, are one plus epsilon and one minus epsilon, and uh, actually I will consider only this case. So I will uh, study the case when this constant is one minus epsilon and this one plus epsilon. And further, I uh, will assume that P is bigger than one because uh, uh, of the geometry of LP balls, they are unifree uniformly convex, uh, which will be crucial uh, in the theorems below. Uh, so uh, uh, we take the prob probabilistic approach, uh, similar to the uh, approach from uh, the Professor Schechtman talk. Uh, we consider random points, uh, which are uh, independent and distributed according to the our measurement. Uh, and for the set B in our subspace L, uh, we consider the uh, error of discretization. Uh, so, so this is very similar to the quantity from the Professor Timlikov talk. Uh, uh, if x1, xm is random, then this is random variable. Uh, and if we take B to be the unit ball with respect to LP norm in our subspace L, and uh, we somehow managed uh, to prove that uh, with some uh, non-zero probability this quantity Vp uh, is uh, less than epsilon, then we have with this probability the discretization, discretization inequality. Uh, okay, but how uh, do we get here? Uh, obviously from the Chebyshev inequality, uh, one uh, have the bound that the probability uh, that uh, the random variable is smaller than two 
expectation of this random variable is always bigger than one half. And thus, uh, if we somehow manage to prove that the expectation is small, less than epsilon, then we have the discretization with uh, probability one half. Uh, so this is our uh, idea. Uh, not our, this is the idea. Uh, uh, but uh, let me uh, discuss the connections uh, with the mentioned problem of approximation of moments of random vectors. Uh, so uh, assume we are given a random vector uh, in Rn uh, and some inner product in Rn. Uh, then for some set K in Rn, we can uh, also uh, consider uh, the um, error of uh, discretization of moments of this random vector. So this is very similar to the discretization problem. And actually this is the discretization problem uh, when uh, we consider linear functionals and the distribution of this random vector U. And uh, the main question is uh, how many uh, these copies, independent copies U1, UM of our vector U do we need to guarantee the bound that this error is small with high probability. Uh, this pro problem uh, have been extensively studied by many, many mathematicians. Th this is some list, but uh, not all the researcher researchers uh, listed are listed here. Uh, but this is uh, the uh, studied problem, but mainly uh, the problem was studied when P is two and K is the Euclidean ball uh, with respect to this inner product. Uh, and how do uh, these two problems, problem of sampling discretization for uh, any functional uh, subspace and this problem of random vectors, uh, discretization of moments of random vectors are uh, connected with, with each other. Uh, uh, clearly, as I have already mentioned, uh, if uh, we have uh, K in Rn, uh, we can consider uh, this set uh, of linear functionals enumerated by uh, y's in k and mu, we can take mu, the distribution of random vector u, and then the expectation of this uh, sampling error vp is equal to the expectation of uh, this up from the problem of approximation of moments. Uh, but uh, actually these problems are uh, in probabilistic terms are equivalent. Uh, if uh, we have any inner product on any subspace L in LP uh, and any set B in L, uh, we can consider an orthonormal basis in L uh, with respect to this inner product and take independ in independent vectors UJ, which is just these vectors. Uh, and take the set K in Rn uh, to be all the vectors such that the linear combinations with the basis belongs to the set B. Excuse me, what does it mean? U1 of Xj, what uh, is Xj? Xj are random, uh, 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 random uh, points distributed according to mu. Uh -huh. So uh, Xj are random and uh, Uj are, is random vector. Uh-huh, okay. And uh, since uh, Xj are independent, then Uj are independent. Uh, and distributed according to some. Uh, they are identically distributed because Xj are dist identically distributed. Uh -huh. uh, so uh, we take this K, these vectors and get that uh, the expectation of uh, Up is equal to the expectation of VP in, and this is the error in discretization problem. Uh, so if we have uh, any result uh, about uh, the approximation of moments of random vectors, we can reformulate it in terms of uh, our problem of sampling discretization in terms of this expectation of error um, in the sampling discretization problem. Uh, 
and uh, there are several known results. Uh, most of them are about uh, the case when P is two, and I present uh, some of these results. The first result is due to Mark Rudelson, uh, one of its uh, one of the most known of his results, I think. Um, if we uh, consider the Euclidean ball, uh, and uh, assume that uh, uh, random vector U uh, uh, has uh, unit covariance matrix, uh, or you can assume that uh, the norm uh, is defined by this expression. Uh, you can read it from left to right or from right to left. Uh, then the expectation of this uh, error u2 of k2 is bounded by some expression, but a is the crucial part here. Uh, a is this uh, expression. Uh, and uh, maybe it, is, it will be more clear if we reformulate it in terms of functional spaces. Here is this reformulation. So if we take, uh, if, we, uh, if we reformulate this um, bound, uh, like I uh, said already here, uh, we get the following um, uh, result about uh, error expectation of error in sampling discretization problem. The bound is uh, similar. B2 of L is uh, the unit ball in L2 norm of on in our space L. And A is uh, log of uh, dimension M. And here is uh, this expectation. And I think this is the quantity that uh, Boris Sergeyevich uh, uh, speak about in his question to Professor Timlikov. Am I right? I, I think so. We introduced such a norm with Safridi. Mm -hmm. So uh, here, is, mm, uh -huh. here is a period of this quantity. Uh, and uh, if we want to obtain some uh, discretization result, we need to bound this quantity. OK, uh, assume that mm, this always mm, Assume that this is bounded by some constant by right squared uh, multiplied by the dimension, right? Uh, uh, for, for any points, then uh, in the, uh, I recall that we want to make this expectation small. If if this uh, is less than epsilon then we get the discretization result. So, okay, we take M of order N log N and uh, get the discretization. And what is this assumption? This is actually the Nikolsky type inequality assumption. So, uh, uh, the definition, uh, we say that subspace L satisfy, uh, satisfies the infinity Q Nikolsky type inequality assumption uh, with some constant m if uh, the supremum of function is bounded by some constant uh, multiplied by the power of the dimension and multiplied by the LQ norm for any f in our subspace L. And when uh, Q is 2, uh, this is the type of assumption that we, uh, that we assume here to uh, obtain the discretization result uh, for L to norm of order n log n. So we, uh, this is the uh, simple idea what we further do in the talk. Uh, okay. Uh, so this is the corollary that I have already mentioned. If L satisfies the infinity to Nikolsky type inequality assumption, then we uh, have the discretization of L to norm uh, with uh, the number of points of order n log n. Uh, this is the classical Rudelson's result. Uh, I mentioned that in this result, this, that in this result, when the points are, uh, then when we choose the points randomly, uh, this uh, uh, additional logarithm uh, cannot be removed. Uh, but it appears that uh, for the problem, for the initial problem of sampling discretization, 
uh, when uh, we do not want to choose point, points randomly and we're asking only for the existence result of these points, um, we can uh, remove this logarithm. And this is the result of uh, Professor Timlikov and Irina Limonova. Uh, then that uh, there are three constants that for any n-dimensional subspace uh, in L2, uh, which satisfy, uh, satisfies the infinity to Nikolsky type inequality, uh, there are uh, points, there are m points uh, where m is of order n, such that the discretization result holds. So uh, the um, uh, uh, probabilistic approach uh, seems to uh, give additional logarithms uh, in any case. Uh, so, um, th there is no, uh, 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 as I understand, there is no hope to remove all the logarithms uh, with probabilistic technique. Uh, okay, and uh, we are interested in uh, the LP balls, and as I already uh, have mentioned, the LP balls when P is greater than 1 are uh, uniformly convex. So, I recall that uh, the set, the um, symmetric convex set uh, is said to be uh, theta convex with some constant. If for the norm generated by this uh, symmetric body, we have such bound for each f and j in this body B. So this is the notion of theta convexity. And uh, the result of Gudon Rudelson, which I present already in the reformulated form, uh, I reform, uh, they have the result for uh, <clears throat> the approximation of uh, LP norms of random vectors, and I reformulate it here for functional spaces. So um, assume uh, uh, that we have a theta convex set, uh, which contained in some Euclidean ball. Then for any P, uh, which is uh, in this range, uh, one has the similar uh, estimate to the Rudelsons uh, with A of uh, such, uh, we, uh, where A is such big expression. Uh, so here is the supremum over Euclidean ball D, and here is the supremum over the set B. Uh, again, we can try to uh, make some assumptions on our subspace uh, to make this quantity uh, bound to be bounded by some constant. Uh, so uh, I already said that BP of L, this is the LP ball in L, is uh, P convex when P is bigger than 2 and 2 convex when P is less than 2. Uh, and uh, in this result, uh, we consider only theta convex sets and P should be uh, bigger, uh, no, not less than theta. Uh, theta cannot be less than two. So uh, we should uh, assume, if we want to apply the Gudon Rudelson result, that P is bigger than two. Uh, the result can be applied on, only in this case. Uh, when P is bigger than two, the B, BP ball, uh, LP ball is contained in L2 ball. So we can take in the result uh, B to be LP ball, D to be L2 ball, uh, and uh, we should make some assumptions on our subspace. Okay, try to, uh, let us try to assume that L satisfies the infinity to Nikolsky type inequality assumption. Uh, then what we have here, this is bounded by uh, N no, multiplied by some constant. Uh, this is dominated by this expression and also bound, bounded by n uh, to the power uh, p minus 2 divided by 2. And uh, we get uh, the power p over 2 of the dimension. Okay, so uh, when we uh, assume that 
uh, we have an L with infinity to inequality type inequality assumption. Then uh, this A is bounded by N, some polynomial dependence on A and some logarithms of N. And uh, thus we get only the discretization result uh, with the number of points of polynomial uh, order of the dimension. Okay, uh, let us assume that uh, L satisfies infinity P inequality type inequality assumption. Uh, this means that this uh, quantity is bounded um, is bounded by N to the power one minus uh, two over P. But this expression is bounded only by N. So we again uh, get only the polynomial dependence on the dimension. Uh, and uh, we actually can guarantee only uh, this bound because from uh, the LP, uh, from the uh, infinity P inequality type inequality follows only infinity two inequality uh, type inequality. Uh, and not better. So I, I, I recall that in Nikolsky type inequality, we uh, assume that this constant depends on dimension in uh, this particular way. Okay. So uh, again, we obtain only the polynomial dependence uh, in the discretization problem. Uh, and the idea is uh, somehow to improve uh, or restate this result uh, without this additional term, because uh, obviously this term is often much greater than this term. So uh, maybe this reformulation will be this improvement, maybe uh, with the cost of this power of logarithm, maybe it will be worse. Uh, and it appears to be true. So, uh, uh, the first main result uh, is this. If we have a theta convex set, uh, then for any p uh, in this range, uh, the expectation of error, uh, error uh, in the sampling discretization problem is bounded by uh, the similar quantity to, to the Rodolson Gudon, uh, and uh, A depends only. Uh, on this uh, quantity, on this expression. So when we assume uh, infinity p inequality type inequality, uh, this became bounded by some constant multiplied by n, and we immediately obtain uh, the discretization uh, result with the number of points of order n log n to the power p. Uh, because again, LP ball is p convex when p is greater than 2. And here, this theta will be p. So this is uh, the first uh, result. Uh, and uh, let us compare to the uh, conditional result from the talks of Professor Timlikov and Professor Feng Dai uh, that uh, the result which ha has been proved in uh, the paper of these five uh, authors. So um, I recall the definition of entropy number and uh, it is the usual definition but I point out that uh, in this definition I use two to the power two to the power k uh, points, not uh, to, to the power k like in the talk of Professor Timlikov. A little bit different, but uh, actually this is very similar and actually the same. Uh, okay, and uh, the result uh, which has already been presented in Professor Timlikov talk and in Professor Fengdai talk, uh, if we have, uh, if we know uh, the rate of the decay of the entropy numbers of LP balls with respect to the uniform norm, then we uh, 
have the discretization result for LP norm with the number of points of order n log n. So here is n log n. Uh, and uh, the, the way to prove uh, this result is actually very similar. Uh, what I mean that firstly we uh, prove uh, the, the result um, with uh, under the uh, assumption that we know the rate of the decay of the entropy numbers. Uh, as Professor Timlikov uh, have already told in his talk, uh, here we consider um, the discretized uniform norm. Uh, so if we have the um, discrete set of M points, uh, we take uh, this uh, L infinity norm with respect to uh, these points, and uh, result is the following. Alpha, P, and theta are some parameters. Theta is the parameter of convexity. B is theta convex. P is the parameter that we want uh, to discretize LP norm. And alpha is uh, here uh, is the rate of the decay of the entropy numbers. So, okay, assume that for any set of uh, points, uh, we have the, the constant WB of X, uh, such that the entropy numbers are bounded uh, by this constant multiplied by this uh, uh, quantity. It is actually very similar to this assumption. This is the constant and this is the rate of the decay. So uh, assume the similar. Uh, I'm sorry, Igor, but uh, I repeat almost the same questions, maybe. But but if here you you have not for any but expectation the same estimate, it's sim uh, it's a small assumption. Is it possible to have the same? Not uh, for x, but expectation of the entropy numbers. So uh, 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 if we assume the expectations of entropy number yeah. bound. Yeah. Mm, yeah. I don't know. Actually, I don't know. Uh, Maybe it makes sense to look at. Yes, yes, I think it makes sense because here we get the expectation of this quantity. Uh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. You are right that uh, we need only assume that the expectation is bounded. Uh, I don't know. Yes, maybe you are right. Maybe uh, this is also. There is a, uh, we introduce this norm, and then there is a paper by Grigori who study this norm in term of distribution so it makes sense to look at it okay sorry yes okay uh okay um so assume we have this bound uh, then we can uh, estimate uh, the expectation of uh, the error of the discretization uh, this is some quantity and again we only need to know what is a uh, a is the crucial part here so it is some uh, de dependence of M, and here is the dependence of our on our space. Uh, so WB is here, and this is uh, similar quantity to uh, this one. Okay, uh, so we, we want to compare this result and uh, the previous result of uh, these five. Uh, five uh, authors. Uh, so we take again uh, instead of B this the set BP of L, uh, which is again uniformly convex uh, with uh, this theta. And uh, in this big theorem, we take uh, alpha to be P, theta is this, and uh, the assumption. Uh, uh, and we assume that we know the rate of the decay, similar to the uh, theorem of five authors, uh, with some constant C dependent, uh, which depends only on uh, the number of points M. Uh, then by uh, this theorem, we get uh, the bound for this A. Uh, and again, if we uh, assume that this C of M uh, grows logarithmically in M, then we have the discretization because I recall that uh, we need only uh, for the discretization we only need to make this expectation small, less than epsilon. So uh, if, if this a is small, then we have the discretization. And how to make this a small? Uh, to take m 
sufficiently big and what sufficiently big uh, to make m of this order. Uh, so uh, if we have the assumptions uh, like in um, this theorem, we know that the constant is not, uh, does not depend on any m. So r here is zero and we have a uh, discretization with n log n to the power uh, max uh, of p n two minus one. And that, this is slightly better uh, when p is less than three um, if we compare uh, this result with uh, this theorem. Uh, okay. Uh, so uh, how we get bounds for the entropy numbers? Uh, actually, uh, for any theta convex set, these bounds are known. Uh, and uh, this is a result of Lagrand that he used in his some of his works. Uh, maybe it, it, the result was in some other terms, but um, in, we can simply reformulate it uh, for our purposes. So uh, these uh, entropy numbers are always bounded by this quantity. So this is the dependence of the space and M, and this is the rate of the decay. We take these bounds, uh, plug them uh, to this um, theorem, and uh, obtain the stated above result about uh, theta convex sets. And basically, this uh, solves the uh, not solves, but uh, provides this result uh, when p is bigger than two. Uh, I, I uh, uh, yet I should mention that this p is grows when, when p is grows, the power of logarithm also grows. So uh, this is a uh, worse result than um, provided by this theorem. But uh, in this theorem, uh, we have uh, stronger assumptions. Uh, why? Uh, uh, how we can compare these assumptions and the uh, Nikolsky type inequality assumption. Uh, what is the Nikolsky type inequality assumption? Uh, actually, uh, this is the assumption about the dia diameter of our set with respect to the uniform norm. And actually, this is equivalent to the, this assumption, but only for the first entropy number. So Nikolsky type inequality uh, here, this is uh, the same type of assumption, uh, but only for the first entropy number. Uh, oh. Okay. Uh, so, um, what about uh, the case when P is less than two? Again, in this case, we can uh, obtain some bounds for the entropy numbers and take these bounds, put them in the conditional theorem here or here, and uh, get this statement. That the expectation of this error of the discretization is bounded by the quantity where A is this expression. Again, uh, if we take, take M of order N uh, log n squared, then uh, this will be small when uh, the constant c is big enough, this will be less than epsilon, and we get the discretization result. So, uh, mm, okay, uh, first of all, I would like again to compare uh, this result to the previously known result uh, uh, by uh, these five authors was proved that uh, under the infinity to Nikolsky type inequality assumption, uh, we can discretize LP norm with uh, the number of points of order n log n to the power three. And here is a similar uh, result. Uh, we assume the Nikolsky type, uh, infinity to Nikolsky type inequality and get uh, the discretization with the number of points of order n log n squared. And to summarize, here is 
uh, all the results about sampling discretization. So uh, if we assume that on our subspace uh, we have such Nikolsky type inequality for any F and L, then we have the discretization uh, with uniform weights uh, for any integer m bigger than some constant multiplied by n log n to the power uh, maximum of p and 2. Uh, so this is uh, the main result and uh, this is the uh, assumptions on the subspace. Uh, uh, I also would like to mention that uh, while studying this problem and uh, proving the previously mentioned uh, results, uh, it appears that one can uh, slightly improve the uh, eudon rudelson bound. <laughs> so assume, uh, we, we assume the same, that uh, B is theta convex uh, and contained in some Euclidean ball, uh, P not less than theta in this range. Uh, then we have similar bound, but A um, is this. So uh, what is better? The power of logarithm is better. In Gudon rudelson result, uh, they have here, they have two minus two over theta. And this, uh, this always bigger, uh, not less, not less than one. When theta is two, it is one, and it is uh, when theta is bigger than two, uh, this is bigger than one. And theta always is bigger uh, or equal to two, uh, because th this is the parameter of the convexity. Uh, so this is uh, the slight improvement of the bound. Okay, so. Uh, uh, now we can try to get the discretization result. Uh, we assume that <laughs> L satisfies infinity to Nikolsky type inequality. So uh, this will be um, n bounded by n to the power p over 2. This also will be bounded by n to the power p over 2. And uh, when we take m uh, of order n to the power p over 2 log n, then we have the discretization. And uh, it, uh, as it has already been mentioned in the uh, Professor Schechtman, Schechtman talk, uh, we can combine this result with Lewis's change of density uh, and uh, obtain that for any space L, we can embed uh, the uh, any space L of dimension n in LP uh, when p is bigger than two, uh, when we can embed uh, this subspace in small l uh, p uh, with m uh, of order n uh, p over two log n. So this is uh, similar to the result of Burgen, Lin, and Strauss, Milman uh, that uh, has been mentioned in the Professor Schechtman talk. But they uh, have extra log, I guess. No, they has extra log, and here is. Extra no, no, just to in uh, power one. Yes, ah, when okay. p bigger than two, they have log n. Uh -huh. Okay. And as I understood, this is the best known result. That maybe this is uh, the result uh, that the best result that can be proved by the probabilistic technique. Uh, but I don't know this. But I assume that this is uh, because for p is two, this is uh, the best result when. Uh, what uh, can be get from the probabilistic technique. Okay. And uh, I, I, I just mentioned that this problem also have been extensively, extensively studied. And if I'm not mistaken, this particular problem was firstly initi initiated by Professor Schechtman and then uh, has been studied by many, many mathematicians. Here is some of them, but not, not, not all of them. Uh, and uh, as we have, uh, as we uh, today um, uh, study, uh, have um, 
uh, okay so uh, from professor shekman talk we uh, understand now that this uh, problem is closely related to our problem of sampling discretization uh, i have a few minutes so a uh, few words ten about hmm? 10 minutes okay uh, a few words about uh, the technique uh, the technique is um, pretty uh, similar to the uh, one from Gudon Rudolson paper. Uh, the first uh, observation is that um, the following symmetrization argument. Uh, instead of studying the expectation of this error, we can study the supremum of Bernoulli process. So uh, uh, here is the lemma itself. If we have, assume, assume that we have uh, this bound um, for any points uh, and here is power less than one this is crucial with some theta dependent on the points uh, here epsilon are um, uh, independent and identically distributed symmetric Bernoulli random variables with values plus or minus one uh, if we have this then the expectation can be bounded by this quantity and again we are interested in a what is a a is this so uh, we need to uh, provide such uh, bounds uh, to obtain the results that i have mentioned above uh, and the approach is uh, uh, very standard we use the uh, telegram's generic chaining technique to bound the supreme of random process uh, so, um, okay, uh, what, what is the, the technique? Uh, if we have a metric space, a quasi-metric space, then we can define the gamma functionals. What is this? Uh, we take uh, sequences of nets, Fn, uh, of cardinality, uh, two to the power O, two, two to the power N. And we take the distance of uh, each element F to this net, uh, multiply by uh, uh, this uh, quantity, take the sum, uh, take supremum over each uh, over um, elements from our space, and take infimum over all uh, sequences of nets. Uh, and here is gamma functional. And uh, the Telegram's result states that if we know uh, the bounds for the uh, tails of our random process of such type, bounds of such type. Uh, then we can uh, estimate the expectation of the supremum by uh, some constants multiplied by gamma functional. And in our case, we have this random process. For a uh, linear combination of Bernoulli random variables, tails estimates are known. So uh, we just take this estimates uh, take our process, take the difference, uh, put it in this bound and obtain, obtain uh, this type of estimate with row, with row uh, of such type. This is not a metric, but uh, some sort of quasi metric. Uh, and now we can try to uh, take some uh, naive steps. We um, just uh, use Dudley's bound. What is Dudley's bound? In the um, definition of this gamma functionals, we can uh, take nets which correspond uh, corresponds to the um, uh, entropy numbers. So here, here will be entropy numbers. Uh, hop, hop, hop. And uh, under our assumptions, if we use this Dudley's bound, uh, I uh, uh, some here some technicalities. But after application of this Dudley's bound, uh, we get uh, the similar result that I have stated, similar conditional result. But here will be uh, worse power of logarithm. I recall that uh, in the result that I have stated, there should be one minus one over theta, where theta is the parameter of convexity. 
and this bound is valid uh, for any uh, for any b uh, not necessarily uh, convex. Uh, so uh, how uh, to achieve this minus one over theta? Uh, I use uh, the um, recent development of uh, development of the generic chain chaining technique due to Ramon Van Handel from uh, his work. Uh, he uh, develops some ideas in this technique and uh, it seems make uh, possible to um, uh, make some arguments uh, simpler, simplify some uh, Telegram's ideas. So his, here is the brief idea of the proof uh, that I have, uh, uh, these ideas I have used. And um, maybe this is the time uh, to, the, to, to end my talk. Here are some references. Uh, uh, the talk is based on my preprint uh, in archive. And uh, if you uh, somehow want to uh, read this uh, preprint, it is better to uh, uh, to see tomorrow because tomorrow will be uh, the revised version of this uh, preprint. Right. Yeah. Uh, so thank you for the attention. If you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. Okay. Thank you, Igor. Please questions. I have a question. Mm -hmm. Okay. Igor, could you go to the slide? Uh, where you uh, show the summar summarized mm -hmm. theorem. Mm -hmm. So in this theorem, C, uh, there is constant C and C depends on M, P and Epsilon. Uh, yes. My, my question is the following. So when you assume this uh, Nikolsky inequality, mm -hmm. in some cases, this M also depends on M. Uh, yes. For instance, like this for hyperbolic crosses and other stuff, this M is like log N to some exponent. So in that case, it would be useful to have more or less explicit dependence this, of this constant, how this depends on M. You can Do get you know that or? Uh, you can get explicit dependence, uh, for example, from, um, from uh, these uh, bounds, uh, not from these bounds from these bounds. Here is, um, here is the place where I have used the Nikolsky type inequality and here will be M um, to the power P multiplied by N and if M depends logarithmically on N, uh, sure you can uh, make uh, similar discretization with similar uh, bound on the number of points. Ah, that means you just draw this uh, just for simplicity, did not? Yes, yes, because here uh, you can get M it from... of n multiplied by to the power p multiplied by n. So if this is log n, mm -hmm. uh, then you can take m n uh, log mm -hmm. n to the power p and okay. get the same. Yeah. yeah. Okay. 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 Any more questions? If not, thank you, Igor. We work hard to, 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 to the end. So thank you all the speaker and uh, see you tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. But now what, uh, Bore? Алексей хотел какой-то митинг сразу после доклада. Не, у меня не сейчас еще один митинг. У меня тут на телефоне сидят. Нет, я просто спрашиваю. А он скажи, чтобы Алексей Алексеевич может быть. Да, 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 да. Потому что мы посидим, а Владимир Николаевич присутствует, может, что-то скажет. Мы тут... а, ну да, я просто мне да, 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 да. по отделению. Да, я просто, может, передам вашу просьбу, чтобы в пятницу хотя бы формально кто-то присутствовал на семинаре, потому что у нас пересечение. На каком? Ну, на вашем семинаре. А, так нет, ну я поприсутствую, да там много. Да, да, потому что у нас пересечение очевидное, и мы реально будем с 7 часов присутствовать здесь. Здесь, да, 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 да. Так что 
так сказать... А вот Андрош, Андрош уже выключился. I'm here. Я просто должен заранее извиниться про пятницу, потому что твой доклад, а он семинар Меньшова Ульянова в пятницу в 8 часов. Я веду... Никаких проблем. Никаких проблем. Я как раз хотел послушать, потому что, ну, может быть, будет понятно, если ты на мой доклад будешь, что там... Я, я буду, да. Я из заранее извиняюсь. Просто я пришел нас... материал, в общем-то, я могу файл прислать и все. Давай, ага. Спасибо. Файл, да, файл там мы попросим всех, всех э, кто прислали э, файлы из доклада. Это ну да, будет... вообще у нас на этом семинаре три губ будет выступать, и, и я думаю, что народу не так много останется. Ну. Все тогда, до свидания, спасибо. А, до свидания. Да, да. Okay.